Let's take a little bit deeper into this incident, bringing in 33-year veteran of the Las Vegas Police Department and host of Blue Lives Radio, Lieutenant Randy Sutton. Sir, thank you so much for joining us. First and foremost, your reaction, and uh, we have the 17-year-old in custody. Now what? Oh, this is, this is just the beginning. Uh, now we're going to, well, the, the fact that he's alive is, is, is a little bit different than what we've seen from many of the mass shootings. And of course, uh, from his own words, he did plan to commit suicide, um, but was, uh, didn't have the guts to do it. Uh, but this is now going to go into the prosecution phase. The investigative phase is still in the, in the works. They're going to be going through all of his social media. They're going to be going through uh, all of his uh, all, all of his, his his short life. And the kid's only 17 years old and became and became so perverted uh, as, through some mechanism, whether it's mental illness, whether it's the video games that he played. But something went wrong with this young man to to cause him such such anger to uh, to kill his classmates and and one of the things that was very telling was what he said when he was uh, when he was going through his rampage that he didn't kill the people that he liked and I think that that we wind we might wind up seeing that bullying uh, played a role in this I'm sort of curious because I wanted to ask you about that so how does that tie into yes what could have what could have caused this and also um, does that prove premeditation and then what when we learn that there was explosive device, what's going on behind the scenes and what can those devices tell us? Well, when you say premeditation, absolutely premeditation was, was at work here. Uh, the fact that he created these devices um, shows that he was planning this. You don't just, uh, it, it isn't a, hey, wake up in the morning and, and try and make a pipe bomb. So uh, he's, been, he's been thinking about this, planning and plotting this for a while. now. The, the, um, the insidious thing about, about these devices is that they indiscriminately kill and maim. Um, so, they, you know, one, one of the, the devices, I understand, you know, was, um, was a pipe bomb. And, and, and these, uh, these IEDs, uh, improvised explosive devices, can be very deadly, but they can also, you know, cause, cause injuries that are disfiguring. Uh, it's, a, it's a very, very evil, evil type of, uh, of, of plot. And they're going to have to go. I mean, they have no idea where all these devices are unless he unless he cooperated and said, "This is where I put them." And this, of course, that would be paramount when they questioned him. But I don't know how fast he lawyered up. We do know that he made some statements about what what happened, but I don't know how how in right. depth they got with him. And just like you said, he's 17 years old, and when and during his first arraignment, he was there alone without. Um, without any guidance. Uh, I, my, my last question is your take on the response the morning of, uh, your reaction uh, uh, to how it was responded, how quickly it was responded. Obviously, there was an armed guard on the premise. Well, the, the uh, presence of, of the armed officer. Now, the, the officer is, uh, it was, was critically injured. He was shot. Uh, I don't know if he was able to return fire or not. I haven't heard that. Uh, but he, uh, he was a, um, uh, a veteran of the Houston Police Department, from my understanding, and then took this job as a school resource officer, um, as a retirement job. Um, I think the fact that, that he was able to engage probably saved the lives of, of many of those students. And I also understand that there was a uh, Texas trooper that also um, uh, engaged the suspect. So, you know, the fact of the matter is, uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but there is a movement in uh, the state of Illinois where we also had a shooting a uh, school shooter taken down the other day with before he was able to, to uh, cause any any deaths by a school resource officer there's actually a movement to defund school resource officers and replace them with mental health professionals uh, and this is just madness the, what happened yesterday and what happened uh, last week in Illinois is is a shining example of why it is so necessary to have uh, uh, armed police officers in the schools. All right, Lieutenant Sutton, thank you so much for joining us, sir. We appreciate it. My pleasure.